Hey, what's up, guys? North Forty Seven back again for some more of the Golf Club Two, and well, as you can tell by the title, thumbnail, and intro, school is back in session, shall we say? Um, little disclaimer at the start: there probably will be a little bit of colourful language in parts, if not <laughs> through a good lot of this video. Um, but yeah, the topic that I want to cover today is the annoying excuse that I've just heard so many times now throughout the life of TGC2 and even all through the life of TGC1 as well. Um, that is the phantom break excuse. Um, I'll just briefly take a side, uh, side track here. I am only... I'm not doing it is now Friday night um I was supposed to be doing the next video for the random core series tonight unfortunately I'm not because I had a bit of a senior moment last night and when I finished recording I was originally I recorded this video last night I was actually doing it on the Golf National um as that's the upcoming course next week or yeah this the yeah the next event on TGC tours and the European tour um so I thought I'd do, I thought I'd use that course um, as those of you who play on PS4 will be aware, if you want to manually start a recording, you're going to double tap the share button, and then to finish the recording, you'll press the share button again, now you get the little uh, quick menu comes up on the side, and you can either just press, press triangle to save a screenshot, press square to save the video clip, or you can scroll down and press X on whichever one you want. So as I said, I had a bit of a senior moment, went down, saved video clip, went and played uh, round in... Telemade RCR World Tour on Pine Valley and then I said right time to render the video and upload it. So the senior moment is that I didn't scroll down to save a video clip, I scrolled down and saved a goddamn screen sh uh, screenshot so uh, kind of a bit pissed off at that one uh, that I have to redo it again but uh, this evening anyway Friday night just after just not long ago I've been watching a uh, Carl OS 1991's uh, live stream. I was in the chat there uh, for his Four Nations round, and it was on this course, Dunhall Manor Golf and Country Club, otherwise known in real life as the K Club here in Ireland. Literally only about uh, 35, 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes uh, drive away from myself. <coughs> so you will see me setting up the actual tea and pin sets that the, that the guys are playing over in that series uh, do go and check out their videos if you haven't already they are all uploaded and scores are in I did play um, this course earlier on today as well it was I just finished watching uh, early 1981's video you can actually see you can see a score there so sorry for any spoilers if you are looking here um, but yeah, I just finished watching uh, Lee's video and I decided, you know what, I haven't played the course for a while. I'll play it myself. So this is my score from earlier on. <coughs> I managed to shoot 10 under, same pin set. Reasonably, reasonably calm conditions, pretty much the same actually as what the guys are shooting. So I'm hoping actually it's um, it's actually going to be the same now. So I'm going to add him a ghost just for uh, just for shits and giggles, to be honest. Because uh, <laughs> I'm probably not going to shoot the best while doing this although I am not concerned about how well I shoot what I want to do is focus on up in that green and as I say this sorry mic is getting cut around the the headset wire there um yeah just focus on putting to bed this age-old excuse of the phantom break um what I can oh yep it does indeed seem to be similar conditions so hopefully I was not shooting straight a few minutes ago in the uh in the driving range so hopefully that'll iron itself out I'm not gonna add any fade just gonna smack it up here oh and there's a pull left it's dry anyway it'll be in the bunker um yeah the age-old excuse as I say of the phantom put or phantom break should I say now I myself um, have been guilty of using this uh, this excuse in the past and when I say guilty of using this, this is before I learned to read the greens the way that I do. You'll see how I read the greens dur during this video, if you watched my previous videos, and uh, through all of them you will see... Now, what is the shot lie here? It's okay. You will indeed see how I read the greens. 
and 99.9% .9 of the time I'm, if not in the hole, I'm very very close to getting it out by the way that I read them. <coughs> I'm, by, I'm by no means a god at the game, or a guru or anything like that. You can see I just hold that one out there for birdie. Um, but I do definitely consider myself to be at least an above average player in this game. Not tooting my own horn, but I do. I mean, I do have my shit rounds, and <laughs> just like you're seeing now, I just hit a very fast downswing. That's going to come back on the slope. But as I say, I am not in any way concerned about how well I'm shooting. I'm going to focus on the greens when I get this done and put it to bed. What I consider this phantom break excuse to be the equivalent of, now it's probably a bit of an extreme comparison, but take the likes of any online shooter, Call of Duty, Battlefield, the most popular one at the moment now, Fortnite, anything like that. You're running along, you come around a corner, somebody else comes around the corner from the opposite direction, and you both shoot, you die. You could have sworn you shot first, your bullets were hitting him, you were getting hit markers. You look at the kill cam, and in the kill cam of them killing you, you didn't even shoot. But no, no, it was nothing like that. It was all, it was all down to lag. It was all, all lag, 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 lag. Uh, it wasn't um, like, in all fairness, with the kill cam thing, it can, it can potentially be like. So that's why I think it's a bit of an extreme comparison. Um, but even if you don't watch the kill cam, you're saying, that's fucking bullshit. As I said, going to be colourful language. That's fucking bullshit. I shot him first and he still killed me. I put about half a clip into him. He put three shots into me. Um, that's, that's as I say, it's a bit extreme, but that's the comparison that I'm going against. The Phantom Pull. <clears throat> I went down ground level there. You saw that I matched up the, uh, the grid line just in front, of, uh, in front of the ball, up to the base of the screen. A lot of people, like, I mean, I'm seeing this... Everywhere. Facebook forums, like TGC forums, haven't kept up with the HP forums for a while, but I mean, it's just constant. It's all throughout, as I say, TGC 1's life cycle, and now it's all throughout uh, TGC 2's life cycle. Hopefully, it does not carry into TGC 2019. Hopefully, this video gets seen enough that it puts it to bed once and for all. There never has been, never will be, a phantom break in this game. All it simply is, <clears throat> you can see right now, those two grid lines in front of me, uh, the two closest, no beads running along them, the rest of all the grid lines running up to the hole, you can see there is grid, uh, there is beads running along them, the, let's see, can I get it to pan over to the right, no I can't, but the, the grid squares to the left of the hole anyway, you can see there's no beads running along there either, could well be flat, might not be. What a lot of people have the habit of doing, is just pressing triangle or Y on Xbox. I don't know what it is on PC. If you're using a controller, I presume it'd be Y as well. What they'll do is they'll press triangle or Y, whatever it is, and they'll have a little look here so they can go down to the hall and say, okay, yeah, this put left to right doesn't seem to be too severe. Down it here, yeah, it looks fairly level. Got some flat grid, flat lie there. <clears throat> Might aim out to about here, knock it up there, and hope that it goes in and it doesn't and then they're saying phantom break it didn't turn or it did turn or whatever uh, I'll get onto the reverse phantom break in a minute well what I class is the reverse phantom break anyway um, so what people are not doing as I mentioned in my tips and tricks video coming down line up your grid lines <coughs> excuse me grid line is reasonably flat it's ever so slightly starting to raise on the right hand side there um, moving on to the next one. Just try and level it out there. It's about the same. Very, very minuscule bit of raise there on the uh, the right hand side again. Got a grid, got a bead running along it here, very, very slowly. But look at that. It's pretty much the same, just the opposite side. It's basically gonna read as level. Very, very, very subtle little break there. Now it's starting to become a bit more noticeable. And now it looks like it's kind of trying to level out again. Just pull it back. No, there we go. It's, it is a little bit noticeable. That there is. That subtle little break there. And again, I'm kind of just putting it a little bit, little bit too far on the base of the screen. But it's a very, very subtle little break there. So I'm just going to have another little look at uh, 
these first initial grid lines. There we go. Now I've lined it up properly with the base of the screen and you can see clearly that on the right hand side where that yellow grid line is, it's ever so slightly raised up off the base of the screen, whereas on the left side at the other yellow grid line, the horizontal grid line is flat along the base of the screen. Let's try the next one now. Let's get it lined up a little bit better. Just so we can see. It's a little bit more flat but it is still there. I can still see a tiny, tiny little bit of break there. That could be the difference between you getting there into the hole, missing slightly left, missing slightly right, and then you're gonna say phantom break. So we'll take, take what I do next. We notice that slight little bit, it's very, very slight. So we'll just take that into account. Um, run it up, trace out that little line. This looks to me like it's gonna be left edge. Should be no more than left edge, so 24 feet up one foot, so we're gonna add on 20, it'd be 44, 42, it's on 42. That's what I'm considering this to play. 170 is the speed of the greens. Let's see how we do. May well miss it, may well not. Get up there, go on. Did I give it the weight? I gave it the weight. So there you go. <clears throat> there was the very, very slightest little bit of break there. Um, that could well have been a bogey if I had not have gotten down and had a look. Now hopefully I can get a, a better example of this uh, mysterious phantom. That seems to come up and oh, I think just like the previous, just like earlier on, I am over under the trees. Yeah, pretty much the exact same spot. Oh, but a little bit less actually, I've got a headwind now, I had nice calm winds, had a tailwind actually I think uh, earlier on. <clears throat> actually I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to take uh, I'm gonna take the ghost back out because ghosts and even sometimes uh, playing alongside people live can actually affect, affect my tempo and uh, swing. I do apologise if that cut out there, hopefully it didn't. Uh, we'll continue on anyway. <clears throat> So, yeah, let's try and get this up onto the green. It's 141. It's going to be playing about 148. We've got that wind. I'm going to club it up. Uh, I'm going to take a good amount of. Ch I'm going to take a good chunk of change off that one. Hopefully, I can at least just get it up onto the green. That's a little bit better. So I think the ghost was affecting me there. Getting up there nicely. Yeah, as I was saying there just before, I hopefully did not cut this record now and have to redo it again. Um. Yeah, go, playing, along, playing alongside ghost balls or people live, it has a habit of affecting my uh, tempo and swing for some reason. I don't know why. So I got a decent amount of break here. Again, it's quite clear that it is a right to left break. It's going to be playing about there. So I'm just going to get this one over and done with quick and tap it in. Um, like, I mean, I honestly, I don't know how much... I can stress it, but um, yeah, it is, uh, I, I don't even know the words to uh, to say now, All right, 210, I'll, I'll get this shot out of the way, 210, down, so I'm play, playing about 203 with the wind, okay, I'm going to touch a slight little bit up on this, hopefully the, hopefully the wind will hold it up enough now, I can just run up to the hole, um, yeah, it just gives me such oh, that's a good strike. It just gives me such a headache to constantly read or hear people saying this phantom break when there is no such thing as the phantom break. You have been given the tools to read these greens. I do understand that people don't always have the time to take the time and read the greens. You wanna just say, okay, right to left, I'm gonna aim out here now and I'm gonna hit it. If it goes in, it goes in. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Ah, feck it. All that kind of shit. But, I say, I was watching, I was in a Kahalas 1991's live stream there earlier on for the Foreign Nations on this very course. Um, again, I won't, uh, if you haven't watched um, the video of it, or you weren't in the live stream, I won't uh, ruin the result of that for you. You may have seen it when I was loading up my ghost there. Um, he does this method as well, gets down, has a look at these grid lines. What are they doing? Rather than just looking at the grid, looking at the beads on, on the uh, on the grid lines from here, and just seeing that oh yeah, they look to be sloping right to left, and the beads are telling me it's sloping right to left. 
I'm going to aim out here, hit it and hope. We get down low to the ground level and we eliminate any potential little sneaky break that may want to catch us out. Just like that. Just line those grid lines up at the base of your screen. If one side is more raised, obviously clear as day, you have got a left to right or right to left break. Here we've got a right to left break. So let's trace it out now. Looks to me like it will in fact come out to about here. So we're going to add on the 20, it's going to be 37, 35 is what this one is playing as, as it's up one foot, so I'll push that marker out to 35 feet. So this is what I'm playing, I'm aiming to get my ball down to that marker now, if this was perfectly flat. That's how much power I want to give it. Takes the break, come on turn turn turn, I went out way too far there. So, it's not full, no I know I am yapping on here, talking away, so I'm not getting the full, I'm not doing my full concentration, but it's not 100% foolproof, but it takes out the um, what word can I use to describe it? The re keeping it simple, it takes out any way that you can give reason for this phantom break, and using it as using the, our excuse for the phantom break, because you got down, you read it. Mm, to me, it looks like it's going to come out to about here. If I miss it again, that's my error. I didn't read the gre I didn't read the uh, the put properly. I didn't read the break. So can it turn? It does. So we save. Do we save power there? I think we save power there. We did indeed save power. <coughs> um, but whereas just looking at those beads, aiming out, hitting it, and hoping, that's not going to give you a good round. The amount of times I have seen people, as I say, on the likes of the TGC Tours uh, forums, saying the amount of phantom breaks throughout this course. It's absolutely ridiculous. I couldn't uh, couldn't put, couldn't get the birdies because of these phantom breaks. And I see a lot of times what will happen is <coughs> people will get so pissed because they'll take a put. I'll, I'll try and demonstrate it up here, actually, when we get up to the green. I'm just going to knock this back up, back as far up the, as far back up the fairway as I can. Uh, I'm getting a bit tongue-tied now. I hate having to record a video more than once, but of course, as I said, I was a bit of a gobshite and had a bit of a senior moment last night and saved the damn screenshot instead of the video clip, so I'm actually praying that I am now, not at the moment, just talking to myself because I hit the PS button when I was taking my ghost out of the round and that the recording has stopped because then I feel like a right feckin' eejit. <coughs> So, uh, I don't know if this green is going to be the best way to uh, give it an example. We'll see, what we, we'll see what we can do anyway about what I mean. Um, we'll get up there, 96, going to be playing about 98. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to touch that up a couple of, about three notches there. Wind should carry it in the rest of the way. If it goes long, we have that slope. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of phlegm in my throat tonight. I have to stop smoking. But that was actually a brilliant approach there. So, I'll try and I'll try and explain it anyway here now. <clears throat> Just say, for example, this was this is a ten foot pull. You go and miss it right along the left edge. You thought you had it dialed in perfect. You didn't get down. You just looked at the looked at the beads on the grid on the uh, on the green grid. I said, right, gonna aim out about here. You took your putt and you just burned that left edge. And it carries on and carries on and carries on. And just say, for example, it's not sloping off to the right. But say it just stops about here anyway. Or I say not sloping off to the right. If you've got a left to right break, it's going to slope off to the right. But we just say for sake of argument, the ball stops about here where the marker is now. Or we say, actually, sorry. Say you're putting directly to where the marker is. And it screams past the left edge and ends up stopping where the marker is. But back where you were starting that put, there was no uh, no beads running along that line. Or along some of those uh, grid lines or whatever. So you thought it was playing straight. Or whatever. So yeah you wouldn't go past the left edge. If it broke left to right you're going to go past that right edge. So say you end up roughly around about where the marker is now. It's just screamed past the left edge. There was a only a slight bit of break in it but it was there. But because there was no grid lines or no beads running along the grid lines. You just jumped to the conclusion by seeing no beads that it was perfectly flat. You're screaming at your telly now. You're saying, 
load of bullshit. Phantom break, phantom break. Didn't it didn't show me any beads there. So then uh no, I just need to remember this. We're gonna be putting back this way. What happens then is screen loads back up, you're putting back this way. Lo and behold, what do you see? Back off down where you just put it from. Those beads have magically appeared now. Why didn't it tell me that there was that break there a minute ago? Literally all it is sometimes plain and simple the game doesn't load up or render the beads I could land in this exact same spot in about an hour's time if I played this course again and the beads and the beads might not show up they were showing up there but the next time I play it and end up in this exact same spot the beads may well not show up it's just it's just a loading thing it's just sometimes the game does not load up the beads um the topic of reverse what I what I dub as the reverse phantom break is on the was it on the first hall we got the example of it where it was basically flat. Pretty much flat. There was a very, very, very tiny little bit of break there, but basically you could get away with pretty much playing it flat. Um but what happens is, again, just say looking at the green here now, the grid lines are there. But just say, for example, it's so minuscule the break is that you think it, uh, that it actually plays flat. But because those beads running along it, you think there's left to right break. So you aim out accordingly, the ball goes fucking straight. And you're saying, that's bullshit, that told me that that was going to break left to right. And it didn't play it straight. Now there is a lot of cases where, depending on the green speeds, Maybe you're playing on faster greens than you're used to, and you put a bit too much power on it. That can well happen. That, in, all, in all fairness, that still happens to me to this day. I just I'm not paying attention. I haven't adjusted to the to the green speeds. If I'm playing on 150 odd uh, green speeds, and then all of a sudden I'm playing on 187s, I haven't adjusted, and I'm not even going to a or work this out. I'm just going to hit it up there. Um, I haven't adjusted and I do overheat it sometimes and obviously it's because I put more power on it it's not going to take the break it's going to just it's going to push through the break um, but other times then when you are fully keyed into the green speeds and just say for example here now here's a fine example I, if I remember right actually this position on this green this ball will play straight so good example here for both scenarios we'll take the phantom break first Right, we'll read the green. Nice and flat. Nice and flat. And again, nice and flat. So that's a nice straight put. I know for a fact now that that ball is going to travel straight from where it is now into the centre of that cup. Unless I magically, or not magically, <laughs> uh, majorly <clears throat> even, push or pull the put left or right. Um, whether I push it right or pull it left. <clears throat> That's pretty much the only way that I'm going to miss. Let's have a little look, just out of curiosity, what's happening here. Now look at that there. That grid line is flat along the base of my screen right now. Should be showing that for you as well, whether you're watching on your laptop, PC, phone, even on your on your TV itself. But look at the grid, look at the uh, the bead running along the grid line. It's showing that there's a little bit of break there. Let's have a look at the next one. Line it up. Sure enough, there is a little bit of left to right break there, but this first one, this is the one, it will play straight. <clears throat> Just imagine you've got four grid lines that are all showing like this. <clears throat> that is pretty much flat. <clears throat> now, I said that that was flat a second ago. Left side is flat, right side is ever so slightly raised up above, therefore, it's shown the, it's shown the, um, the bead. That it is going to be a right to left because it is sloping a bit right to left. But that is going to, it's so minuscule, that's pretty much basically going to play straight. You could just aim to the, if we were coming back the other way, it's going to be playing a left to right put. So you could, you could uh, play it to the left side of the pin or the flag stick, which will be the right side from this direction. Otherwise, just keep it central. Once you've given it enough weight, it's going to be pushing through that very, very minuscule break <coughs> and play straight rather than break. But what a lot of people do is they just look and they see 
oh yeah, there's the grid, there's the beads running along the grid lines. There's a bit of break. We'll just move it over and aim out. Ball goes screaming past the edge of the edge of the uh, edge of the cup. <coughs> and they're effing and blinding and cursing and um, basically sounding like your average college you are Fortnite player or something like that. You know, shouting down the mic <coughs> that the ball didn't break, but yet the the beads showed uh, were showing break there for them. That's that's what I call the reverse phantom break. What we've got here on this side with no beads, although we do know already it's playing straight. Just imagine there was that slight little bit of break there. Just imagine there was that slight little bit of break. There's no beads running along the grid uh, along the grid lines. I keep it aimed dead center, assuming jumping to the conclusions that it's straight. And it might miss there where the marker is now. There's just enough break to make it miss right along that right edge of the cup if it was left to right break. Or over this side if it was uh, right to left break. But I didn't notice it because I didn't get down. I just saw that there was no uh, beads running along the grid line. And I did that. And it turned. And I'm like, phantom break. No. No, 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 no. There is no goddamn phantom break in this game. As I said, there never has been, never will be. I do admit, I have in the past used it before I learned to read the greens. All the top players, well I presume all the top players would pretty much do a similar method of reading the greens to what you see me doing now and if you do watch uh, Carl's uh, live streams or videos as well, he does the same. And I am right now very tempted to try and take the driver over here because I got a nice 8 mile per hour tailwind so we're going to go for that, just for the laugh. Uh, I pushed it, so that's wet either way. Um, would I have made it? Possibly would have just about made it. Um, but yeah, if you're not going to read the greens properly, if you're not going to use the tools that HP Studios have provided you with for reading the greens, and you're missing putts due to these quote unquote phantom breaks, you only have yourself to blame for having your shitty scores. I don't like. I mean, I I don't mean any disrespect to people. As I say again, you may well not have the time to be pissing around, reading your putts, getting down low, and analyzing like you're a CSI investigator all the grid lines and is there break, is there no break, and all this bollocks. Basically, um, I do still do it myself in casual rounds. I just I don't care. I'm just having a laugh with a, with a couple of people online or whatever, or just. Just passing the time, say if I have a half an hour to spare. I'm just hitting the ball around. I don't care if I shoot twenty over par or twenty under par. I'm just having I'm just passing the time or I'm having a laugh with a few mates. But if I'm playing in the likes of a TDC Tours event or a society event or something like that, and I'm not taking the time to be reading these putts and I'm getting sh and I'm posting shitty scores, like I'm I've only got myself to blame because I'm not using the tools that HB Studios are providing me. I'm just jumping to conclusions that there was no beads running along those grid lines and to me it was straight, perfectly straight, but in actual fact there was break there. And I didn't see it because it was such a minor break that it's not noticeable. You do get break you do get breaks where um you can see straight away. <clears throat> Obviously, the more severe that it is, you're you're gonna be able to visually see straight away that it's gonna be a left to right or right to right to left break. You're gonna see the angle that the grid line is going, but it's the it's the little breaks, the very little subtle breaks that you want to be watching out for. That's why if you ever see that there's no beads running along these grid lines, you get in there, you have a look at them, because otherwise you're literally just making up an excuse. Because you didn't bother to read the green properly. And I mean I got a lot of feedback, a lot of positive feedback from my first tips and tricks video, the uh the from T to Green and everything in between uh titled one. Regarding how I how I do my putts and how other people do the putts. Um as I say, a lot of like uh Carl OS, Carl OS 1991 he does this method as well. I don't know if he does the part that I do as well, where I've now looked at the looked at these grids, these grid lines. So definitely left uh, left to right break. Now I come back, 
and I move forward is now to put it and I imagine the ball moving towards the cup and I'm just tracing out the line as I move forward and where I think the ball is going to go I right now think it's going to go here let's give it a smack and see what happens should turn turn too much didn't put it out enough <clears throat> But there's a demonstration. That's what that's what I do. I'll I'll mentally trace out uh, what way I think the putt is gonna go. I'm nearly sure that, as I say, all the top players, like all the world tour players, or all the top end PGA tour players, and all the way down through all the ranks and the likes of TGC tours, and even people who don't play on the tours, um, are all gonna play this way. They're all gonna have do this to some degree, do some form of um green reading like this rather than just looking at and relying on what the beads are telling them because that is all just it's just down to pure luck pure luck is all that that is down to um, because it's not 100% guaranteed that that's exactly what way that put is going to be um, as I was saying there a second ago I got a lot, got a lot of uh, positive feedback from that video the tips and tricks video where people were really struggling with their putts People were five or ten, were a five or a ten handicap, if not more. After watching the video and taking into consideration all the things that uh, I shared in that video of how how I go from the tee to the green and putting and all that sort of stuff, the handicaps shot up. Some of them are shot up to plus fifteen, plus twenty. I think right now, like my handicap is just shy of being plus twenty. It's sort of yo-yoing back and forth now at the moment between a, a plus eighteen and I think about plus twenty-two, plus twenty-three. Um, but a lot of people have thanked me so much for their scores getting drastically lower, the handicap drastically improving, just simply for what I told them, especially with reading the greens, and taking that, taking those things into account. <clears throat> But there are, oh, is this going to go? It's tracking. Nah, it's shy. <coughs> Good four or five feet shy, to be uh, to be honest. Um, very, very difficult pin position, this one. <laughs> In all fairness, look at this. Trying to come back to the cheeky little shit. That's not stopping. <laughs> That's a horrible, horrible ball. Oh, dear. That's the wonders of golf. you got to love it when you have these... Uh, these difficult pin positions now it's uh, a little bit less break I'm not even gonna bother reading I'm not actually I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna show you an example now of what people do so we got a 16 foot pull it's right it there now over the pin it's saying it's up eight inches up here in the top right it's saying it's up one foot I'm gonna go with up one foot I'm not gonna get down low I'm just gonna press triangle have a little look all right yeah okay I can see right to left right to left right to left must be playing flat because there's no bead there. Oh, I didn't mean to go down. Don't want to go down. And then there's a little bit of right to left there. Now, I didn't really get a good look at that beadless uh, grid line there. But going by those beads, I'm going to say, well, I aim it out about here. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to break too much. So I'll go here. Don't you know, I'll probably drain this putt as well. So I'm still going to do, uh, do what I always do anyway. I'm going to add on 20, so it's going to be 36, 34. So it's playing like a 34 foot putt. Because I'll always treat my putts the way I tr uh, treat my approach shots. So 34 foot put, I'm aiming at about here. 34 feet is going to be about there on the back swing. Will it turn, will it turn, will it turn? I've just missed. Pretty decent, pretty decent uh, guesstimate for uh, not getting down and looking at those grid lines. But whereas if I get down, I look at the grid lines, I eliminate, like I didn't even get down there and have a look to see was there any break in that uh, beadless green grid line there could well have been there may well not have been but I don't I it's a bit late now um, unfortunately I can't take a mulligan and go back and redo the shot <clears throat> but uh, I say it was a pretty is a pretty good guesstimate I just missed on the outside but I can guarantee you that exact put 99.9% .9 of the time I'm going to drain that put if I get down have a look at those grid lines eliminate any potential uh, phantom breaks again I'm doing air quotes here I don't know why I have no camera 
Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to, yeah, we'll just hit a 7 iron up there just for the crack. Um, yeah, I've gone down, I've had a look at those grid lines, seeing what they're all doing, and then I come back to where the ball is, and I move forward, and I trace out that little put line of what way I think the ball is going to go. 99.9% .9 of the time, I stand a very, very, very good chance of draining that put. If not, that 0.1% of the time, I think 99.9% .9 actually is a little bit too... Uh, too much to my own horn in all fairness but we'll say about nine we'll say we'll say nine times out of ten we'll make we'll keep it simple nine times out of ten i'm gonna drain that put that one time out of ten i may just miss it like i did just there <coughs> but i mean at the end of the day even professional golfers in real life could be the best golf could be the best putters in the world they're always gonna miss putts they're not gonna make birdie on every single hole eagle on every single par five and all this sort of thing you know where be the fun in that, to be perfectly honest. Um, but again, as I say, if I had gotten down, read that grid line, or read all those grid lines, traced out my putt, what way I think the ball is going to travel as uh, it moves towards the hole, and I still missed, I know it's down to me, because I eliminated all factors for our, our, our any potential. I eliminated all, uh, any, any and all, excuse me, any and all potential. Should I say, I don't know what I'm saying, factors for any misreads or anything like that on the green. Um, well, not even misreads, but just errors on my part where I can use the excuse of this phantom break, or as I mentioned earlier, what, I do, what I've dubbed as the reverse phantom break. Um, where there is the beads running along the grid lines, but yet the damn pot is playing straight and you think it's going to break, but it doesn't. I've eliminated all those factors, so if I still miss that put, that's down to me. But if I don't do that, it is it is still down to me, but it's my own stupidity for not reading the green and jumping to the conclusion that those beads on the grid lines, or the lack of beads on the grid lines, are telling me exactly that, that that's what that put is. I'm, I'm, I'm just trusting what these beads and beadless grid lines are telling me now. Rather than getting down, as we can see, there is a beadless grid line here. Let's have a little look. Is it flat? May well be. Here we can see there is that very, very slight little bit of break. Left to right there, it's very slightly above. But let's see what this beadless one is doing. Ah, come on, line up, line up, line up. There we go. Does indeed look to be flat. I'm not surprised it would be, as it is coming back to be right to left here. So I would, to be honest, expect it to be. So I'm going to just trace that little line. And I think I'm just going to push it just slightly right of where the pin would be. Hit it, push it through the brake, and in she goes. <clears throat> but, again, that beadless grid line could have had break in it. It could have been right to left, it could have been left to right. And not reading that... I'm making 100% sure if you miss your putt, you're going to say phantom break. There was a bead, there was a grid line there with no fucking bead running along it, but yet the ball, the ball broke left or broke right, whichever one it was going to be accordingly. You've only got yourself to blame for not for, like I mean I don't want to call you stupid, but you've got your own stupidity for not using the tools. And getting down there and reading the damn green. Now, I mean, I could go on all night. We're on hole 11 here. I'm going to wrap this video up probably after the next hole. I'm not even arsed now at this stage of working out my shots like I normally do. I'm just going to hit it up on the green, see where it ends up, and have a look. I'm going to have a fairly hefty putt here now. <coughs> As I say, this is the second time that I've recorded this video. I do actually hope that it is still bloody well recording because I don't want to fucking well do it a third time. Ah, let's have a little look. Yeah, it's a considerable break. Now, I, I, to be honest, I will do this even in TGC tours or society events or casual rounds. I'll say, all right, yeah. I can see that there's quite a bit of right-to-left break there. I'm just going to put it out here. It depends on how lazy I'm being. So I'm going to add on seven. That's going to be so. It's playing about thirty-five. Okay, let's just hit it up there. And to be perfectly honest, there is uh, a number of times I have just done this and I've drained the putt. And pretty good guesstimate there. 
put it out enough all I wanted to do was just get it close anyway quite a tricky pot to try and drain even with getting down and reading those grid lines but there you go now that I put that just over the left edge there and that only very slightly broke there if that was a little bit of a longer put and I was putting a bit more power on that that could have well played straight and just burned over the left edge even though the the bead was running left to right so I'm going to finish it up on this hole now we're coming up on just over 35 minutes uh, probably about 36 37 minutes I have a little timer set here because I don't want to go on too long so I'll work this one out we've got 187 playing about 184 and I'll take off the 7 for the wind so that's going to be 170 what did I say 184 so 177 definitely going to be dropping it down and I'm going to touch it up a couple of notches and hopefully I don't come up too short and go swimming but if I can touch down either at the front of or just in or just in front of the green and bounce on that would be good touching down on the green it's going to check up quick now it's going to run on so the golfing gods are with me which going by the way to the ball is tracking there they're not going to be and give me a phantom break quote unquote no so it's going to be left to right but we will read it we'll have a little look <clears throat> we can see that it's left to right but instead of uh, just say aiming out about here and hoping for the best which just initial looking at it I think it's probably going to come out to about here maybe we'll come back on here right okay good amount of break there again it's slowly starting to calm itself down and level out it's not going to be completely flat but it, it well it's slightly calmed down not really much let's trace out that line so let me start that again so it looks to me like it's going to come out to about here but I'm going to be safe I'm going to put it on the line I'm going to have another little read of it Maybe just a tiny little bit more. So I think I was roughly about right there. Then again, I could be reading this completely wrong. Did I give it enough? Ooh, didn't need to be out. Didn't need to be out a little bit more. But I did read it pretty well. And I even guesstimated it pretty well. So I'm not going to play any more holes anyway. I'm going to start to wind the video down now. Um... What way can I close this feckin' video out? Like, just the fact that I can't stress it enough. If, as I said earlier on in the video, I do understand that not everybody has the time to be sitting down and doing that, going from grid line to grid line to grid line to grid line, all the way up to the hall and seeing what way they're breaking, then coming back and doing like doing what I do. I know everybody else doesn't trace out mentally in their head what way they t what path that ball is going to take by going from the ball to the cup and visualizing what way the ball is going to go not everybody has that time of the day sometimes i don't so i don't do it i just piss around and have a laugh don't give a shit what score i get but if i'm playing events like tgc tours or a society event or anything else if i if i want to if i want to play seriously and get it try and get a good try and get as good a score as i can on the course if I'm not going to take the likes of this into consideration and use the tools that HP Studios have provided me, and I don't shoot a go and I don't shoot a score, or I'm missing putts because of these again, I'm doing air quotes, quote unquote, phantom breaks that do not bloody well feckin' exist. Then, as I said, there never has been, never will be a phantom break. You're not getting down there. You're not using the tools that HP have provided you. Line those grid lines up at the base of your screen. If one side is more elevated than the other, you've got whatever break that's going to be, whether it's a left to right break, right to left break. Whatever it's going to be, you've got that break there, even though there is no bead running along that grid line. Do not take for granted and trust fully 100% what those beads are telling you. Because more often than not, the beads themselves even with the pace that they're going, can be lying to you. I've seen grid lines where, excuse me, where the beads are 
flying along the grid lines but yet you get down there and it's little it does a very very subtle little break there it's not really much in it but you're gonna can see if you if you're only looking at those beads you're gonna assume there's more breaking it there for some stupid reason you're gonna put it out more you're gonna miss the put and then you're gonna be pissed off that you missed the put and you're gonna say as again what I what I dubbed the reverse phantom break but when you're not reading those be when you're not reading those lines and there is no beads running along them and that put goes and takes a break or breaks whether it's to the left or to the right you go past the hole you're looking back and all of a sudden those beads are showing up on those on the uh, on that grid line and you're like that's again here's a bit of colorful language that's fucking bollocks that's fucking bullshit there was no grid lines there or there was no beads running along those grid lines that's a phantom break that's a load of shit no it's not a load of shit you didn't get down you didn't read the green you've only got yourself to blame as I said even if you do get down and read the green you do see that there's a break and you miss it out there although you do still have yourself to blame pretty much you've no you've you haven't got your yourself to blame anywhere near as as you do if you don't get down and read the green you get down and read the green you don't actually really have to blame yourself you've done everything that you could to eliminate any quote unquote phantom breaks you've read the green you've judged what way you think that ball is going to go you missed it again you're not going to sink every single putt sorry I'm just rolling the smoke so I know a lot of people have taken these tips on board and the scores have drastically improved and they've been very very thankful to me for uh, for the tips that I did provide them so to all of you who did take the tips on board and have improved your game um, I am grateful for your for your feedback and you're more than welcome for our, I, I am more than happy that uh, I have been able to help you uh, but for those of you who want to continue <laughs> to just trust the bead just trust those beads put it out to the left put it out to the right whatever it is you think it's gonna be and you're missing your puts and you're posting shit scores please for the love of fucking God don't be all over YouTube, don't be all over Facebook, don't be all over Twitch, don't be all over fucking HB forums, TGC Tours forums, uh, don't be all over, what's the other one? Twitter. Don't be all over them saying fucking phantom breaks. There's no such thing as a goddamn phantom break. Get that shit out of your head, there's no such thing as a phantom break. They do not exist. At this stage where it does that many phantom breaks in this game, we're going to need that gobshite David Akura, or whatever the hell his name was from Most Haunted, coming in with an exorcist to get rid of these feckin' phantoms. There's no such thing as a goddamn phantom break. You're not reading the damn greens. If you're missing putts, it's your own damn fault. So I know I'm being I know I'm being kind of ranty, pissy and moany and harsh in this video. Especially now in these closing few minutes, but it's the way it is, to be perfectly honest, because like I'm sick to me back teeth. I don't know why I'm going on to the next course. I'm gonna back it out to the menu. Um I'm sick to the I'm sick to me back teeth now. With hearing this everywhere these phantom breaks you don't want to take people's uh, people's tips and tricks and all that sort of thing on by all means go ahead but I'm gonna wrap the video up here because as I say I could be going on all bloody well night going on about this because I just it it really really grinds my gears to where I need to take a whole damn packet of paracetamol to get rid of my headache for hearing it so much <clears throat> if you did enjoy the video drop it a like if you're new to the channel and you haven't already do subscribe and uh, let me know in the comments or whatever has uh, have you taken any anything on board and has it worked for you have you been a, a victim of these phantom breaks in the past and do you think i'm right in the fact that it's like i mean it was my own stupidity even back before i read the greens is it your uh, is it your own stupidity now as well that yeah you are indeed right north I'm not reading the greens. It's my own stupidity. It's my own fault. That's why I'm not posting good scores. Let me know what you think in the comments or on the PS4 community page uh, for the golf club. Um, or even if you're on my friends list, drop me a message. Let me know what you think. But I'm going to wrap it up. Hope you did enjoy the video. Until the next one, which will be random course series. Take care and bye for now.